in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus today is a remarkable day for all of us as we have gathered together around this eucharistic table as consecrated men and women it's a day of reminder for us to recall our yes to the lord after the miraculous catch of fish peter realized as never before his own sinfulness and the holiness of christ this led him to plead depart from me lord i am a sinful man when we think of the numerous miraculous ways in which the lord has intervened in our lives we too feel how unworthy we are of all that he does in our life including being welcomed into this eucharistic banquet as consecrated men and women we have the greatest privilege of being partakers in the mission of jesus as jesus called peter to fish people today the lord exhorts each one of us for the same through our mission and service to the humanity let us then humbly and sincerely ask the lord pardon for all our sins and failures and participate into this holy banquet once again in the presence of jesus we acknowledge our sinfulness and say i confess to almighty god and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what i have done and in what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault to my most grievous fault therefore i ask blessed mary a virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen
let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Hosea died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Oh, is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord.
so you believed second reading a reading from the first letter of saint paul to the corinthians i would remind you brothers of the gospel i preached to you which you received in which you stand and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word i preached to you unless you believed in vain for i delivered to you as of first importance what i also received that christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to cephas then to the 12 then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time most of whom are still alive though some have fallen asleep then he appeared to james then to all the apostles last of all as to one untimely born he appeared also to me for i am the least of the apostles unworthy to be called an apostle because i persecuted the church of god but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace towards me was not in vain on the contrary i worked harder than any of them though it was not i but the grace of god that is with me whether then it was i or they so we preach and so you believed the word of the lord says the lord and i will make you fishes of men alleluia Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in, in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them. and were washing their nets <clears throat> getting into one of the boats which was simon's he asked him to put out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people from the boat and when he had finished finished speaking he said to simon put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch and simon answered master we toiled all night and took nothing but at your word i will let down the nets and when they had done this then closed the large number of fish and their nets were breaking they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink 
But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. <coughs> from now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Our dear Bishop, Most Reverend Dr. Peter Paul Saldana, Brother Priest and Sisters. In a certain parish choir, there was a man who could, could not sing so well. He was not singing so well. The choir master of the group wanted him to leave the group. So he suggested him to quit the choir group. And the choir master also went to the parish priest, complained about this man, saying, this man cannot sing. He cannot be in the choir. And if at all he is in the choir, I am going to resign. Parish priest was a little perplexed. He was a little depending on the choir master. And he called the man who was not singing well and said, you better leave the group. The man asked, why, why I should leave the choir group? And the parish priest said, at least few, five, six members of the choir said, you cannot sing. And the man was angry and he said, that's nothing. At least 100 parishioners told me that you cannot preach. As a, as a CRI body of Mangalore, we are celebrating today the 26th World Day of consecra for Consecrated Life. We are glad today here to see one another coming from different congregations, having different mission statements, different apostolic activities. And the reality of synodality invites all of us to journey together, to participate vibrantly, creatively as religious, and become worthy instruments of communion in the mission of the church. Our life is a mixture, mixture of strengths and weaknesses. We certainly try to maximize our strengths and minimize our weaknesses so people can better appreciate our strengths. We even talk about the weaknesses of others so people are not as likely to notice ours. The readings of today's liturgy talk to us about strengths and weaknesses and how God can make use of simple, unassuming, and most unlikely people to fulfill the divine purposes. We meet three people in our readings who are weak, who are simple, who are fearful, and even an arrogant persecutor when God called him. The prophet Isaiah acknowledges that he is not worthy, he is unclean. But God touches his lips, he sanctifies him, and transforms him. In the second reading, Paul reminds us that he is the least of the apostles, but he is called by God. In the gospel, 
Simon Peter calls himself a sinful man, but Jesus made him the chief of the apostles. To call Peter, Jesus used his own boat, according to the version of Saint Luke. Whole night, Simon was struggling, he was working hard to gather fish, but at the dawn in the morning, his boat was empty. But with Jesus' words and directions, the boat was mysteriously filled with the fish. When the boat was empty, Peter wanted to cling to it. But when the boat was full of fish, he left it to follow Jesus. The miracle of great catch of fish indeed surprised Simon. But what impressed him all the more was the person of Jesus who performed that miracle. He knew that presence of Jesus made that difference. Simon used the boat to catch fish, but Jesus used his boat to capture fisherman Simon. We do not know what happened to the boat after Simon left it, but we do know what happened to Simon after he left the boat. From fisherman, he became fisher of men. We do not know what happened to Paul's sword that took lives of many after he was touched by the Lord, but we do know he gave his life for Christ. God can choose not so good people to be the messengers of his word. Something God does it tr throughout all the history and we all of us are part of that history. Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinner. When Peter uttered these words, it was not just the awareness of his sinfulness, but also the experience of wonder and amazement of the powerful presence of Jesus. Do we have this ability to be amazed as consecrated persons? Each of us needs the grace of amazement, amazement before the wonders that God is working in us. If I do not experience the amazing presence of Jesus in my life, then I embrace a vacuum, which I try to fill with other things, but it always remains a vacuum. This experience of vacuum makes us bitter, sometimes rigid, persons of complaints, complaining about superiors, brothers, sisters, community, food, and many more. As religious, we can go about doing many things. Many are mechanical repetitions, acting out of habit, just to keep us busy. Is this a consecrated life? We need to ask this question today. And on the feast of the presentation of the Lord, His Holiness, for Francis' homil homily, addressing the consecrated persons, asked, Sister Severin at the beginning of the session quoted first part of Pope's homily. I am quoting the last portion of his homily. homily. Pope says, brothers and sisters, we can ask what moves our days? What is the love that makes us keep going? Is it the Holy Spirit or the passion of the moment or something else? How do we move in the church and in society? 
He has invited us to examine our interior motivations and discern our spiritual movements so that renewal, consecrated life may come about by enthusiastic openness to the Holy Spirit. Let us ask the Lord today as we are gathered together to touch our hearts, our lips, our minds, our souls, and our entire being. Allow Jesus to work in us to get the feeling of amazement of his powerful presence. It is this experience of amazement helps us strengthen our virtues, our strength to accept realities, accept our weaknesses, and embrace others with the trust and humility. And Jesus says, as he said to Peter, do not be afraid, I am with you. Jesus asked Peter's boat and he became his follower. What Jesus asks of us, our talents, our gifts, our time, and our consecration. And he, by his presence, by his powerful presence and spirit, sanctifies us and transforms us. We rise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified by the Empire. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He will send to heaven, induce it in the God of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, forgiveness of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As consecrated persons we have gathered here, let us as one, children of one heavenly Father, we lift up all our prayers to him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all the bishops and ministers of the Church, that the Holy Spirit may enlighten and guide the growth of the Church through the holiness of its leaders. May the Church continue to be a channel of God's consolation and courage to the world, especially during this pandemic and turmoil. Let us pray. Lord, let us see, hear our prayer. For all consecrated men and women all over the world, that the with joyful heart we may render glory to God through our prayer life and apostolic life. May our total consecration to the Lord strengthen us evermore in counter witnessing joyfully to self gratifying life of the people in the world, by which may inspire people to seek the real joy in the Lord. Guide us through the difficult times to be able to listen to God and act according to His will. Let us pray. God, your mercy, hear our prayer. For our dear father, Paul Melvin de Sosa, the epitome vicar of the religious, who celebrates his jubilee year of his ordination to the priesthood, that he may always relish the joy of his priesthood and be faithful to the eternal priest, growing in the spirit of charity towards all, thereby he may become a true witness of God's love. May God grant him always good health and increase the spiritual wealth. Let us pray. God, Lord, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayer. For peace and harmony all over the world, especially our nation, that she be liberated from the clutches of the power of the evil one, and that the people may have the courage to hold fast to the human values and live in the fear of God. May Christians everywhere continue to live and witness 
love and brotherhood. Let us pray. Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. For vocation, that the Lord of the harvest may move the hearts of the young to recognize the call of God has for them, and that they may generously respond to his call. Let us pray. Lord, may your mercy hear our prayer. For all the departed brothers and sisters who have lived and released the joy of religious life, that they may enjoy the eternal reward and bliss of our heavenly home in the company of all the saints and angels, interceding for all of us here on earth. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy, hear our prayer. We silently from the depths of our hearts pray for our own personal needs, pray for our congregation, and ask the Lord to bless it. We pray for each and every brother, priest, sister, our superiors. May God guide all of us with His grace and strength. God, our loving Father, as we worthily participate in these mysteries of our redemption, we have expressed some of our prayers. Listen to them and give us all the necessary graces that we need to strengthen our commitment and live our consecration worthily. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. that our prayer and sacrifice be acceptable to God, the merciful Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. 
and so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis of Pope, Peter Paul, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Francis, Saint Anthony, Saint Pio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Acknowledging the powerful presence of Jesus, we pray in his words to our Heavenly Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the peace of Jesus. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins and sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Savior, He'll give you rest forever with Him. Here. You who are burdened, all oh, your His voice, let every heart be for and rejoice, and let us freely make Him our choice. The Savior, He'll give you rest forever with Him. Be. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.